Hello guys, David Vos here. Well, it's another beautiful day in Alabama. It's been raining, uh, well, yesterday it rained pretty good, pretty hard. Last night just poured, and today it's cloudy and it's still cool. It's beautiful. I love it when it rains. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Well, this is number, what, 13? I don't know. I forget. Um, well, you probably know by now I'm not on YouTube. I'll be shut down from YouTube a couple weeks. And then we'll come back. And I'm not too worried about it. But um, So I'm going to go ahead and put the videos up here on this particular area. I can't even name it because when I'm going to put this up on YouTube when uh, I get back. And I'm not allowed to say the word where I'm my other location. But hope you guys get... Um, you know, subscribe to that other location because that's going to be where I'll put my videos when I'm not here. I hope you'll go and check and, and look for for me there whenever you don't see me here. But we've been talking about a lot of beautiful things and we're trying to understand what's going on. I think one thing that might be coming into people's minds at this point is that, well, if John D. did this and then Joseph Smith come along later and as you're saying, did it better or passed the test, then maybe maybe John D. wasn't so bad. How do we know? I mean, a lot of people seem to be getting sucked into this idea that, that you know, how the, what do they say, like more is better or less is better or something like, in other words, evil is better than good somehow because well, you puny little mind, you just don't understand. Why we've got to understand the earthly ways, we we'll never understand the heavenly ways. That's the kind of thing, you see, in other words, we must do more evil that good may come. Even the Apostle Paul was talking about this strange view that people had had begun to teach in early first century. Because Paul was saying we're under grace. We're not under law. And so those were who were oh, uh, misapplying what Paul was saying, like, like Peter said, you know, they're twisting the scriptures to their own destruction. As they always do. And they're twisting the things that the beloved brother Paul was talking about. To their own destruction. They're doing this. They're twisting it because Paul was rightfully teaching we're not under law. We're under grace. But you see, that doesn't mean we should go out and murder people and be evil. And, and start embracing the devil. That's not what Paul meant. Obviously. We're supposed to follow after our Father in Heaven willingly out of love self-control self-sacrifice patience goodness kindness completely the op why would anybody come up with ideas like that well because they they would come up with doctrines to you know doctrines of devils to promote their own beliefs twisted to deceive really so they said okay well the great apostle says we're not under law we can do anything we want well, and then he says that, you know, through our fall, Jesus' love was shown to the world. And his grace abounded much more. When we would break his commandments and do evil and did wrong, well then, he was faithful in order to forgive us. And he loved us and he came and died for us. So therefore, the more evil we do, the more good will come. Let's do more evil so Jesus will come again. Hey, if, if it was our evil that brought Jesus down to the world. See, they're not understanding that it was not evil that brought the Lord here. It was love. Jesus loved us and believed in love, not in evil. But when he saw his children being deceived by evil, he came here to wake us up. To tell us the good news because we hadn't heard it yet. He wasn't going to leave us down here with a bunch of evil people trying to deceive us. He came to give us the truth about his Father who is in, in heaven. And all those who repent and say, okay, I understand now. This is all a deception. I want to follow the Lord. He was trying to explain to them that the other way to salvation doesn't work. Because everybody knows that evil is wrong, even those who pretend they don't believe that. So under the law, we, we, the, the idea was, okay, evil is wrong, so we're going to just kill everybody who does evil. Wait a minute, what if your little children make a mistake and fall down? They got to die too? 
Well, under the law, everybody's got to be paying for their sins, and you can't have preferences and, and, and favoritism. We've got to, you know, do the law equally, cross the board. So this man came in because he broke a law. Well, what was the law? Well, we made a law that you couldn't jaywalk because that was causing too much trouble and traffic, and, you know, and we had to make a law. Why, well, it was wrong, isn't it? Don't be so selfish and run across the street. You might get run over. Or you might cause someone else to run over you and cause them pain. It would be a tragic thing. So we're going to make a law. You can't cross the road except for at the intersection. So now a little kid who doesn't really know the law or a grown-up who's just maybe intoxicated, doesn't realize what he's doing, or somebody who just forgot where he's at, or maybe he's in a hurry, or he's always oh, he sees an accident across the street and he's got to get over there as fast as he can. He runs across right where he's at. Or maybe he looks both ways and you don't see anybody coming and he's like, ah, what's the point? He just walks across the street because, you know, there's nobody coming. Well, he didn't mean to be evil. He was just, he was just actually pointing out that law doesn't work. Because if you make a law, an arbitrary law, that don't make no sense. People are going to be breaking these laws. And that's not going to help. Anyway, I could go on and on to prove my point. But the point is, is that Jesus didn't come here because he believed in evil. And therefore, he was going to come down here and get, get rid of that God of law, which is like righteousness. We don't want that righteousness. Why, everybody should be able to do their own will. Do what thou wilt, Alistair Crowley said. No, 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 no. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, do whatever is best for your, your neighbor. In other words, uh, do unto others just as you would have them do unto you. Forgive them and they'll forgive you. Help them, love them, care for them, like family. This is a whole different deal. So there's a lot of lies here, and I want to show you that these individuals, John D. and the occult, these individuals, many of people today may be Masons and may be diffused, confused by this. Do you realize there are many people who believe in Satanism today? And, oh, I'm sure there's some people who are just stupid, right? They just don't know what they're doing. Maybe they're just sowing their oats or throwing their cares into the wind. They don't really know what they're doing. They're just like a child that, you know, throws a tantrum. I mean, they're good kids, right? They just need a little discipline. That's one thing. But no, no, no. There are definitely people that have thought about this philosophically. And they claim that because they no longer believe in Christianity because it's so wicked and inquisitions and they don't, they want freedom. So somehow that, that, translates to we have to have freedom to do evil. See, this is not a, a true teaching. It is confusion, it is lies, and it's from the devil himself. So, if you look at the world today, it's a bad place. Why? Because when Jesus was on the earth, he offered us eternal life and told us how to do that by loving one another. But as Jesus said, not everybody was going to be ready. Not everybody was going to be as good at this love thing as the others. They hadn't achieved uh, maturity in Christ yet. So he says he's going to give certain talents. We've talked about this over and over again. To one talent to this guy and five to that one and ten to this one. And when he returns, he's going to say, okay, now what'd you do with your talents? Some are going to say, oh, we made ten more. Others are going to be like, well, I buried mine in the ground. Did nothing with it. Stagnated. Didn't progress at all. And Jesus is going to say, you worthless, good-for-nothing servant. You see? And he'll reward those who made something with what he gave them. Progressed and advanced and did better. So, you look at the world today, we're not doing really better. Although there are a lot of things in the world that is better. People, most people don't like going to war today. We don't really believe in war. We have the hippie movement, right? Love and peace. So we're advancing. Now we have laws that say that women get to vote. Children shouldn't be mistreated and made to work when they're little. Like my dad, he was at a very young age. By the time he could walk, he was forced to work in the apple orchards and the, you know, orange groves and, you know, the, uh, in the agriculture. And all my dad and his brother and his sisters and the whole family was made to work. And even the they were very little and they were forced to work. They'd get a switch and beat him until he put in all the time that they thought he should put in. As a young child, he had to get so many bushels. And, you know, it, it, 
it ruined people who who would put through that. It made them insecure and 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 it made them loveless. It beat the love right out of them and they don't even know who they are anymore. And that's not the way we want to live. That's why Jesus came to set up his kingdom, which is a better kingdom of love and kindness and people working together. So, if you look around the world today, I mean, I'm getting to a point, guys. My point is, is that if these occultists, the Masons, were all good, then they would have brought a, a world utopia by now. They didn't. Well, they did bring the United States and, a, a, you know, some, like some kind of progress, right? The Constitution of Liberty and Justice for All. But then we got a snag. Somebody came along and tried to pervert that. And that's the Illuminati. And if you don't believe it's the Illuminati trying to do it, sucking in your children through this rock and roll music, take a look at the rock and roll music fans. They're, you know, throwing up these signs. There's literally videos where you see Anton LaVey, the the leader of the satanic church, showing you what these symbols mean that the rock stars are throwing out there. Because the music industry was started by these individuals that were in the occult. They financed it. They're the ones that started the banking system. The whole system that's here today. The good people didn't do that. The good people were working for liberty and justice and freedom. Charity and love. Printing the Bible. Telling people the good news. But the bad people... They knew about the esoteric wisdom. They knew about the Bible. They believed in it too. But they chose the Old Testament. And whenever they went to find this secret, right? They were going to talk to the Lord. We're going to talk to angels. Get a message from the Lord. Is it going to be a message of how to feed the hungry? Is it going to be a message of how to make a utopian world of peace and love? Care for one another? No. It was a way to bind people under spells, bring people into slavery, keep them from the truth, make a one world government where everybody doesn't know what's going on, but they're slaves, they don't have freedom, and they're making the elite richer and more powerful. And we're getting shorter lifespans, and we're being tortured to keep us down, dis information, lies, propaganda on the news every day, night and day, night and day, propaganda to keep us down. That is not from the Lord or his disciples. It is from the disciples of Satan. They have been woefully misled and deceived. And I'm going to show you that the world that we're living in, if you are a part of it, you're going the wrong way. If you're in the industry of the lawyers, you don't have to be a lawyer yourself. If you're a secretary and you're aware of what these lawyers are doing and you're part of it, you should not be doing it. You need to get out of that industry. If you're working at the courthouse and facilitating the evils being perpetrated on this world, then you're not furthering the kingdom of Christ. And if you're a Christian, you need to stop. You need to quit. If you are a Christian and you believe in the Lord and love and you work at the courthouse or at a lawyer's office or at... Uh, you know, you're going to, to, to university to get a law degree. Look, I wouldn't go to any university, period, because they're the ones promoting the doctor degrees and the lawyer degrees. And if you're learning their crap, then obviously everything you're learning is propaganda. Darwinism, Freudism, Einsteinism, which is all lies. I'm telling you, we're going to prove in this video that Joseph Smith had to restore the truth to be an example to show that the, the true esoteric wisdom does not teach this evil. They're twisting it to their own destruction. So, how many people in this world, what is the infrastructure of this world that was created by this occult, the Freemasons, that own the banks and the, and the, the industries and the big companies like Microsoft and the Goggle Brothers and Zucker Worker Worker Burger, you know, the infinite metaverse. And all of these things, and AT and T, and Disney Channel, and the news, and all of this. What are their? What is their goal? What are they trying to do? Well, it's interesting because they are heavily involved in finances. 
banking, which is designed to keep them rich and you poor. Who'd have thunk, huh? And if by chance you have a dispute with them, you got to have a lawyer. Well, they run them too. They're evil. They're putting people in prison, doing backroom deals. You're a slave. And the doctors, it's no different. They're poisoning you. They're not giving you health. So I want to know just how many of these individuals in the world that are running the world are good people and how many are bad? Well, let's see. What is a good industry? Religion? Nah, they're all liars too. Right? The only buddy that the only person that could be a good person then in our world is those who know the truth that are have their eyes open, they're awake. And what happened to those that got awake in the days of Christ where well, they were murdered, all of them? They gave their soul for the truth. They loved their lives not in the face of death. They loved their lives even in the face of death. They gave their lives for the truth because they loved the world. They would not participate in evil and, and go and join the drunkards and the gluttons of the Old Covenant. Drink that Old Testament covenant. That wine, that covenant. And begin to beat their fellow servants. And Jesus said, He'll come in a day in which they know not and there shall be the weeping and the gnashing of their teeth. Into the inferno. So I want to show you just, for instance, how many lawyers do you think there are in this world? And how many people are associated with that industry, with law? Well, we're, there's no way we could get an accurate number, but I'm going to give you a, a, just a little idea. Take a look at this. So, how many lawyers are in the United States in 2022? According to the American Bar Association, there are 1,327,910 licensed attorneys in the United States. Now, that's the attorneys. What about all the, you know, we're not talking about judges. We're not talking about secretaries the people who write down what they're saying during the trial, the jailers, the court staff. I mean, just take, for instance, a courtroom. There's a judge, and that's not, sometimes they're lawyers, but they don't have to be a lawyer. But even assuming the judge is a lawyer, and there might be three or four lawyers in the courtroom, you have secretaries, and people are just you know, paralegals, they're not lawyers, licensed. There are jailers coming in and out. There is security. There are jurors. There's all kinds of people running in and out of this courtroom. So, I would suspect that for every lawyer, there's quite a few other people involved with this. Now, if you go to a law firm, there's probably one to ten people. I don't know. Maybe huge law firms have more. But a small law firm probably has one or two or three lawyers. And then they have a whole bunch of people working for them. They might even have detectives. They might have uh, people that clean their office or, or whatever. There's all kinds of secretaries and people going and coming. Aaron people. Any person who facilitates these individuals are with them and are working for the same goals. Many of them are going to college to become lawyers. So I would say that the infrastructure around the lawyer system, the judge, the court system, would be millions upon millions of people. I don't know how many. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 million people? We don't know. Now, how many, you suppose, are in the field of the doctor area, nursing and practitioners? I mean, if you go to any city, I pointed this out before, they have a section or an area in the town where it's the hospital. A small town has a huge hospital. Some little small town, the only thing they've got in that town is a hospital and a gas station and a grocery market, maybe a bank. I don't care how small the town is. I've lived in towns where there's a couple hundred people. They got a bank. They got a school. With propaganda, they got... Some of them have a prison. But they got a courthouse. 
They've got doctor's offices. They got hospitals, and that's the whole town. There ain't even any, there's no, they don't even have a place to go buy anything because everybody buys everything at a Dollar General or a, they might have a Dollar General, but it's this real small town, or a grocery market and a gas station. That's all there is. Maybe a restaurant. The rest of the city, the most of the city, is either hospital, health cares, workers, banking. And lawyers and courthouses and all of that in jail system. So I would say that this evil structure that they put in place over us is bigger than buying and selling. It's bigger than, you know, buying merchandise or it's not, it's not like people living, uh, selling their wares. There's very little of that. They own the monopoly on that. They've got the telephone. They've got the telephone station in your town. They've got the electric company. This is all infrastructure to rule over you. But there's nothing else. Just infrastructure that keeps us in prison. Now the reason for that, and I went through all of that and shared that with you, is to share with you this. This is the government that we live under. They are surrounding us on every side. They have us in control, like we're in a prison, we're slaves, they keep us blinded and deceived, and it all came from these individuals who have convinced us that, oh, well, they're, they're okay, you know, eh, they're the occult, you know, they believe in some darkness, but hey, it's just, you know, we've got to have a little darkness and a little light, right? you got to have the law, David, you've got to have the old covenant, the God of hate and vengeance, got to respect him too. No, we don't. Jesus didn't keep any of his laws. He said, no, I reject you. Get behind me. I will not be a part of your world. Be no part of this world. Get out of Babylon. I'm telling you, this is what Christians better wake up now. If you guys, I don't care who you are listening to me, if you don't think it's important to immediately get out, cease all contact and all cooperation with Satan's evil world, Oh, now you're sounding like the Jehovah's Witnesses, you know, they're shunning people and be no part of the world, and so therefore they can't go to school and go to college. Well, that part I agreed with. I don't believe we should go to college. The problem is they send their kids to school. They send their children. I had to go to school as a Jehovah's Witness, scared out of my mind, shaking, because I was told, oh, I had to be an example and not celebrate Christmas and, you know, Halloweens, and, and I was supposed to tell her, I'm a Jehovah's Witness. I couldn't salute the flag, and I was beat up by a teacher because I wouldn't salute the flag, and I felt like it was different, and... And, and we were no part of the world, but the thing of it was, we weren't really part of God's kingdom either. We were in a cult. What I experienced was the occult slowly, gradually taking over the world. Now Jehovah's Witnesses are the, the ones who are accepted. If you believe like me now, where you don't believe in, like they just, we just found out Jehovah's Witnesses or a member of the United Nations. And they claim that is the beast. The devil. And yet they're a member of that uh, that organization. And I was just sharing this with somebody the other day. They have a policy that. Because in somewhere in the scripture it says. You have to have two or three witnesses for everything. You can't condemn somebody. So they'll throw a person out of their organization. Because they don't know if they agree with Jehovah's Witnesses anymore. Well that's apostasy. And they'll they'll turn on you like a fire ant out in the Amazon forest. I mean, they're all over you. If you disagree with anything, if you start having doubts, they give talks, they will mark such a one and stop. Even if they can't find anything immoral or somebody's doing something immoral or anything, they can't, they have no reason to disfellowship them. They just can't, they'll, they'll, they'll usually they'll make something up. But, Usually they don't have to because they have a little teaching that if you're apostate, you can be disfellowship. Well, apostasy for them just means you don't agree with us. So they've got this little thing where since they want to get involved in pedophilia and, you know, rape people, their elders get away with it. They, they say, oh, we've got a wonderful little thing in the Bible that says you have to have two or three witnesses. Well, usually when an old man rapes a little girl, there's no witnesses. So they get away with it. As long as there's no two witnesses to this thing, the elder denies it, the child says it happened, 
they can't the the, the child is is ridiculed and eventually if she keeps insisting that someone raped her they will shun her they'll destroy her and they say it's because you got to have two witnesses well you see if they wanted they could go find another verse that would support not doing that how about the one that actually says what to do when somebody's being raped there's a scripture in exodus or deuteronomy and it says when a woman is being raped if she doesn't cry out or struggle then she's to be stoned to death but if she cries out or struggles or tries to get away and that would mean that she would be able to prove it because there would be a scratch on her arm right or clothes are ripped or something that's all they need to prove that the woman is not at fault and that she was raped if she has a scratch on her arm or ripped clothing they don't need two witnesses they're lying and the reason why they don't some rack some seriously they can't figure that out is because they're lying and everything about that organization is a lie and it's exactly the same thing with the rest of the world all this you're being told every day turning on television oh we've got to have the news we've got to have government we've got to have presidents we've got to have voting we've got to have economy and you know all the stuff that they're telling you got to have you got to go to war and fight the you know germans and fight the russians and 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 we've got to go to school and we've got to give your money to go to nasa we've got to go to mar all the stuff that they say you got to have it's all lies because they're trying to deceive you and that is all due to a group of individuals a brotherhood a secret brotherhood that runs the world and the reason why they're masons is because they've taken over the masons because they don't want you to know what they told you that you not to look into this information they told you that if you do look into this information, it just tells you that the devil is good. See, that's the truth. If you look into it, you'll find out that darkness is good. Look at John D and, and Edward Kelly, why they brought up devils. Ha, 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 ha. And then they confuse everything and they don't encourage you to read Madame Blavatsky's information. They don't encourage you to investigate whether or not Joseph Smith was murdered by these people. But they just confuse everything. So you think, well, if Joseph Smith was a Mason, I guess Masons are good. If George Washington was a Mason, I guess they're all good and whatever they say must be the truth and we've got to obey them. I want to show you right now that this whole, you know, you see on the news right now about how, oh, Ukraine is winning or, well, you know, they're fighting a good fight and they're, they're battling Russia. Well, it's the United States giving them weapons and so all we hear is that we're winning and the Russians are about to give up. They're, they're, de they're almost defeated. And, you know, Putin's probably sick and going to go into the hot. A lot of propaganda. I want to show you that when you see the news, be very careful. You may not even be seeing reality. They, they're not just lying to you, but with CGI, they're manipulating what you're seeing making you believe remember that video that movie that old tv series you watched the other day where um i did on, i showed on my channel where this tv series this guy was the scientist was being recruited by this elite was telling him that everything was a lie we didn't go to the moon we don't have any missiles you know everything was a lie and they were forcing the scientists. They put a little, like a chip under his skin that could blow up if he didn't do what they said. He had to join them. He had to work for them or they'd kill him. So that is what they do. They've admitted that. So take a look at this little, and I saw this on Facebook. And, you know, I think some of you are going to say, oh, of course this is CGI. This was not intended to be fake news no this is being shown to people as though it is the truth and people are believing it even if they don't say it's true they are assuming you're going to believe it even though they're not putting this cgi on fox news maybe yet i don't know if they are or not i don't watch fox news they're putting it on facebook and they're getting a lot of people to believe it it's real it's propaganda why because this entire war is orchestrated and financed and they want you to believe 
that they are God. That unless you get down on your knees and bow down to government, you're gone. You're done. Even Russia must obey the Grand Poopa, who's going to be Trump. They'll blame all the bad things on Biden. Oh, well, our government's got some faults, but at least we have a voting system. And now we've voted back in Trump because now we've come to our senses. They've deceived us. But they're going to tell us, yeah, there's some evil in the world. But ultimately, overall, the elite are good. Trump's coming in, dun, 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 on his horse. And Elon Musk, and Elon Musk is running around saying, oh, yeah, I'm for free speech. And, and I'm for this, and I'm for that. Well, it's too late, Mr. Elon you're just wanting us to think that you're on our side now that it's too late to actually do anything about it. So anyway, watch this CGI and see what they're doing to the minds of the children, trying to make them believe that we're so powerful, we're like God, and we're just wiping out the Russians. Look at this. So, look at that picture. Now, we've showed this picture quite a few times. That's supposed to be a picture of John D. at the altar of fire. And behind him is Edward Kelly sitting down. Well, notice above John D. There's a strange looking thing hovering above him. It's a crocodile. Now look at the the shape of that crocodile, it's a specific outline. It, it, you know, it, it, it looks exactly like some crocodiles that I'll show you here in a minute. Now, here's another picture. This is also a picture of John D. and Edward Kelly. And notice again, hanging over their head is a crocodile. What do you suppose that is? I will show you. Look at this. That is... A picture, uh, it's the Times and Seasons, which is a magazine or a, a weekly paper or something that was produced in Nauvoo, Illinois, in the days of the Prophet Joseph Smith. It is talking about a find that some archaeologists had discussed. Actually, it was, remember, this is back in 1800, so this was when Napoleon Bonaparte was having the French Revolution. And he went to Egypt and looted the pyramids down there, as many of the other uh, conquerors had done in the past, like Alexander the Great and others. But he had, they had actually found some mummies and they found some jewels or whatever and some ancient hieroglyphs or whatever. So they brought these plates, hieroglyphics written on them or whatever, and they brought them to Joseph Smith because, you know, they were also Masons and they knew that Joseph Smith had the Seer Stone, the Philosopher's Stone. They understood what John Dee was doing and Edward Kelly translating language. And they knew that he claimed to be able to do this. So they said, we want you to translate it. Well, notice in this picture, below the top part, which looks like it's above ground and there's some, some animals underneath that what looks like a, a table, which is a lion's head and a tail that stretches out and makes a table. Joseph Smith said that was Abraham being sacrificed by Elkanah, the high priest. But underneath were gods, and under that, what do you suppose that was? It looked very dense. It looks like earth. And in the middle of the earth is, let me show you a little closer here so you can see what it is. Ah, that is an alligator. Well, it's a crocodile, I should say. I always say alligator because that's what we have in America. But anyway, they, they, they I can't tell the difference personally for alligators, crocodiles. But anyway, that's a crocodile and it is a deity, according to Joseph Smith. Now, you can, today, you can actually look up that deity and find out that it is the deity of the underworld, the devil, and we're going to show you exactly who that deity is. All right? But remember, when Joseph Smith had anything to do with this crocodile, he was simply, you know, interpreting 
hieroglyphic manuscripts, but it shows the proper position of this crocodile or the devil in the underworld. But when John Dee talks about it, he seems to promote it above him as if that was his deity, as if he was living in hell himself. And above him was the crocodile, like he was down there in the primordial deep. Well, who is this crocodile? Let's take a look. So here's a interesting article on this deity, Sebek, which is Seb. And Seb was also spelled Geb, but it is the earth or that which is beneath the earth. And this is an interesting article because the title is The Lord of the Crocodiles, The Smiling Death. See, there's some odd titles. Aspects Elias's um, Pantheon, Mohorandi Pantheon, gender masculine. It's a deity alignment, lawful evil. Lawful evil. That sounds like Yahweh. You know, there's some kind of law that puts us in this predicament where we're all going to die. We're condemned. Symbol, crocodile head with horns and plumes. Portfolio, water crocodiles. Domains, nature, tempest. So it says Sebek, pronounced Se Sebek, known as Sebethant in Thay and as Sebakar in Unther. And Chesinta was a jealous, vain. Does that ring a bell? Yahweh says, I am jealous, that is my name. Vain. And even a member of the Mohorandi Pantheon. The Lord of Crocodiles was a member of the low standing yet rivaled only by Set in his wickedness. Only by Set in his wickedness. Set is Satan, his father. And you'll see that Set is his father. Description. Sebek usually appeared in one of the two forms. The first known as the Lord of Crocodiles was that of Mulian, man possessing the head of a crocodile. This form typically wore a horned and plumed headdress. The second form, known as the smiling death, was that of a giant crocodile. The appearance of a giant crocodile smiling was used as a sign of favor and disfavor. Personality. Sebek delighted in devouring humans, but could be convinced not to through obsequious begging and offering of even greater meals. Remember, Yahweh wanted sacrifice, wanted Abraham to sacrifice some sheep and goats and bulls and cut them up and give him the fatty pieces and the blood. That was, the blood belonged to this God, Yahweh. Power, like a vampire. Powers. Sebek was able to summon and control crocodiles at will. And has been known to swallow boats and living creatures whole. Doesn't sound good. Activities. Before the spell plague, Sibek rarely manifested in the material world, in the material world, usually sending his avatar to hunt. Avatar? The Antichrist? Relationships. Sibek was an outcast in the eyes of the rest of the Mulhorande pantheon though he was known for occasionally being an ally of his father, Set, which is Satan, Sobek or Sebek often had conflicts with Malar, who disliked the Molorandi deity for possessing a portion of this portfolio of Iconthropis, worshippers. Worship of Sebek was rare and even considered anathema, that's a curse, you know, out out of bounds, you'll be cursed and shunned and no, do not do that. That's what anathema means. You are, you are 
expelled from the others if you even attempt this. Now, they would never expel anyone except for murder or terrible rape and things that are very evil. Or when one contacted this deity, Satan, or his son, the crocodile deity. Now, remember, the crocodile's in the rivers, you see. So, it's like Set dwelled in the darkness, down in the abyss. But out of the abyss, there was a river that flowed, and out came the crocodile, and there would be seven heads and all of that. So, in some places, such as Chesinat, Chesinta, I should say, though he was often well-respected in communities near large populations of crocodiles, they would appease this god of the crocodiles because they were crocodiles and they were scared of them. They thought that if they gave the dog, the, the, the dog, this deity, if they gave him other meals that he liked better than themselves, they could appease him. So they fed him. So in other words, if you were near danger, one way to appease him, they didn't go to the Lord and ask for protection and, and ask for Christ to come or the Father in heaven. But they would sometimes, out of fear, appease him and sacrifice other animals to him. The priests of Sebek wore linen skirts and collars and shaved their heads. They favored no ornamentation in crocodile form. When preparing for combat, the clergy of Sebek favored light armor and simple weapons. Clerics of Sebek prayed for spells at dusk. Okay, they went out you know, into the graveyard at night by the tombs, by the Anubis. They were connected to Anubis as well, as an Egyptian deity that had to do with embalming the dead. So they would um, go out at, at nighttime when the darkness would come and they would pray for spells or incantations. The Church of Sebek, all the clergy of the Church of Sebek were we're crocodiles. Is that like a warlock? Usually of Mulan descent, priests of Sebek spend much of their time planning methods of seizing power in their surrounding regions. That is exactly what the... When John D., who has a crocodile above his head in all of his pictures, I'll show you some of them. Almost all of these pictures where John D. and Edward Kelly was getting the information from the skull and bones beneath their feet and on a incense altar were offering up fire and in the air over them because they were beneath it because they worshiped it it was it represented something above them that they worshiped they were getting their messages from the dead from the spirits of the dead and the lying spirits of Yahweh that we talked about the other day that is spoken of in the bible where Saul was given lying spirits and other spirits would go to Yahweh and say, oh, we don't want them to find out the truth, so we'll go down there and lie to them. And Yahweh says, perfect plan. And he sent them lying spirits in his prophets. The prophets were sent with, with lying spirits. So it, it, the Bible tells you that many of the prophets of Yahweh were lying. Now, this doesn't mean that they didn't intend for it to be true when they said they're going to destroy the world and kill everybody. But it was a lie. They knew they couldn't do it because they knew that the God above them in heaven, who loved mankind, would never allow it. So they spent their times planning methods of seizing power in the surrounding area. That's what John D. and Edward Kelly began to do in this uh, occultic brotherhood in Bohemia and Bavaria. The city of Sekras housed a temple that served as a center for the church of Sebek known as the River Ma. Upon the city's destruction, the clergy relocated to Adder Swamp of Chesenta, a swamp. That's where crocodiles usually live. No temples dedicated to the smiling death were known to exist. Why would you say smiling death? No one's going to be smiling if they're really dying. Unless it is the one who's devouring you. Orders. All were crocodiles or werewolves. This is kind of a, 
something that obviously has some connection. The Ware Crocodiles followed Civic, though no organization were known to be sponsored by the church. Celebrations, monthly offerings of meat were dedicated to Sebek in order to ward off crocodile attacks. So they had to sacrifice animals to him like they did to Yahweh. Priests of Sebek had to kill a sentient creature monthly. Well, that sounds exactly like Yahweh. As well as create... See, this is what... When, when they, Moses led them out of Egypt, they took this religion with them. They had gotten very familiar with this out of fear because these were degenerate people and they could not understand Ra, the light. So they followed this rare religion that was an anathema to the Egyptian priests. No one was supposed to worship this deity. So as well as creating at least one new were crocodile from among the humans living in Moorland each year. So they wanted to create among the humans a living Moloran, a living dead god. I don't know exactly what that means. Did they think that somehow by appeasing the crocodile deity of death and his father set Satan, that one of them might be raised up into hell and become a god in hell or something? I don't know. Or maybe they were saying that the priests that were doing the offerings were going to get to become like God. Like their God, the God of the devil. Sebek was the son of an ancient manifestation of the Moharande god Set, Satan. And Bishyo Arkfei and the Feywild, known as Monarch, Mornok, Mornok. <laughs> like Mars or something. Prior to the time of Troubles, the largest sect of Sebek's worshippers were expelled from Mohan, Mohorand by the brotherhood of those who smile in the face of death. Now we know what it means, the, the smiling death, because they smile in the face of death and they resettled in Chisenta. Remember, Yahweh never promised eternal life. He never once ever gave anyone the promise to live forever, but only death. Never promised to make anyone a divine being because he said, I am the only deity. You will get down and be my slave, you worm, Jacob. Calls him a worm. Says, get down and worship me, you slave. Calls him a slave, my slave, worm. This is what the book of Isaiah says. I am God, there is none else. I am the Savior, there is no one but me. I recognize no other Savior. In Isaiah 53, it says that he took pleasure in crushing Jesus and he takes pleasure in crushing all of us. So this is the story of this deity, the crocodile, that John Dee and Edward Kelly and all of the occultists that were doing the paintings insisted on putting in the paintings to let us know. Even the, the skull and bones that, that were around John Dee when he was at the altar of fire doing tricks and, and a big show in front of the queen. Queen Elizabeth, and there stood, and, and, and he was showing and presenting this to Queen Elizabeth and to her left, to the right in the picture, is Francis Bacon, who then, after seeing this demonstration, went to Prague, which is in Bohemia, the Czech Republic today, which is in Germany, near Berlin and Bavaria. This is where these individuals went, because it's a big meteorite crater. And in that crater they find the Moldavite. There's a country right near there called Moldovia. And that is because of the Moldavite that they found. And it's a sacred stone that is they were able to look into and bring up the spirits of Yahweh, the lying spirits, the spirits of the dead ruled over by the crocodile Seb whose father was Satan. So I want to show you from this article too. This is um, Sobek. This is timeless myth. Sobek, the powerful half animal ward of Osiris and Isis, ancient god of fertility, half human, half animal. Um. So, I've read through some of that, and it's kind of boring. I wanted to show you this. 
He was a god of pharaonic power, fertility, military prowess. Now, when you see these words prowess, well, maybe he was a good god then. He was prowess. No, no, that just means he was good at something. What was he good at? Well, he was good at military, war. He was the deity fighting against the dangers of the River Nile. Well, in other words, the River Nile was dangerous because there was crocodiles. And so because he was the biggest crocodile, all you had to do was feed him other people, sacrifice, and he might not kill your children. Keep him well fed by, you know, killing off some of the slaves that we don't like and throwing them in the river or maybe some cows and bulls and sheep appease the darkness, right? But remember, they didn't recommend that you do that. Some people who lived near the crocodiles got scared and began to worship him. But it says that Sobek is associated with many different powers and abilities. He has been verified as being the god who loves robbery. He's like a thief. He will take your life. He come up from the water and take your children if they're swimming near the, you know, getting water down by the swamp. He'll take your kids. He don't care. He's, he's, he looks ugly, right? He's reptilian. He don't look good. He ain't the god of the sky like a bird, a beautiful bird. He's not a bull that, you know, you could plow your field with. Might be good for something. No, this is something they despised. They were frightened. They might have thought it was kind of beautiful, the crocodile. Many people say, look how beautiful a snake is. Well, yeah, snakes are kind of interesting or intriguing, but they're icky and they'll kill you. And so will alligators. We'll kill you. You know, and I mean, a bull can kill you, but you use the bull, the power of the bull by putting a bit in its mouth and plowing your field. So human beings controlled these kinds of powers, the kind of power that we call strength. That can be a good thing to have strength. But the powers that be in the crocodile is something that comes out of the darkness of the river. We need the water, but you better not get too close because something evil is lurking. So he was a robber and he eats while he has, while he mates. And he has pointed teeth, meaning he had sharp teeth. That can eat you, better to eat you with, you know, like like Big Bad Wolf. He was depicted as a man with light green skin and the head of a crocodile. He's known to have long black hair done in braids <laughs> and a head with bull horns. Sound a little bit like Satan, anybody? He carries a flagpole size staff in his right hand and wears green armor. His eyes are covered in the film of green mucus. <laughs> He's evil. <laughs> and Sobek sweats buckets of water from which the rivers of the world were created. So he's got some power. Well, the devil's got the power over the carnal evil world. See, he does have power. He always got a lot of power. He offered Jesus all the kings of the world. He owns the world, my friends. Of course, people appease him. Some people even join him because they're scared. They don't understand the value of love because they don't even know what love is. They're more animalistic and they're not really ready for that. Sobek had all the abilities of a common Egyptian deity but he is most highly associated with the water and its tricks. He had divine authority over water. He could command many crocodiles to help him. He was a good fighter, a warrior. Oh, that's wonderful. He was a great warrior. Well, you see, Christians don't like war. We're not about war. And we don't follow after the deity who teaches our hands for warfare, as David said. But we've all, even David, knew about this deity and listened to him long enough to learn about war. But he also attained unto the higher priesthood of Melchizedek, as it says in Psalms, chapter 102 or 105, I'm not sure. Well, he, he was very heavily involved with magic. He was a warrior, but he, he liked magic. 
And he had the head of a crocodile and could transform into a full crocodile when in combat. This startled his enemies and gave Subek the element of surprise. Osiris was the god of mankind. Osiris or Lazarus that died, remember? Jesus had to raise him up. So Osiris went to the world of the dead where Sobek ruled, where Set ruled. Because remember, Set killed him. Set, his brother, the devil, killed Osiris. And Osiris is the one who's going to have Horus, which is going to be reborn as his own son. So Osiris was the god of mankind and both he and Isis took care of the people of Earth. Well, that doesn't sound bad. They sound like good people. They take care of people. Many texts narrate that Osiris appointed Sebek or Sobek to help him take better care of his people against the calamities of the earth. Whatever the reason, Osiris brought Sebek up like his own son. Sebek was very close to both Osiris and Isis, so when Set dismembered Osiris' body and threw it into the river, Sebek went deep into the river to look for it. To me, this is a story that tells us that our deity in heaven has control over even the deepest secrets of the dark. Because this deity, the devil, has to obey our Father in heaven too. Because when Jesus takes over, he's going to take the physical realm and transform it and make it obey him. So he'll overcome death, conquer it, receive the keys of death and Hades, and live forevermore. Because the crocodile, even the lowly crocodile and the serpent shall do no harm in all my holy mountain. And a little child, or the Christ child, the innocent newborn, you know, the new birth, must be born again as a little child. That little child that is the new mankind that will be immortal in the kingdom of the Lord, will sit or play in the hole of a cobra. It will coil around him, up the spine, the serpent power, which is the kundalini, which is the physical energies, which are dangerous. But if you can charm the serpent with the flute, you can charm the cobra and mesmerize the flesh and bring it into submission and it will do no harm. This is what that story is about. So there will be, and I bring this up because many people will look up Sobek and say, hey, he can't be bad because he obeyed Osiris and his mother Isis. Well, that was his stepmother. It wasn't really his, his mom and dad, but he obeyed them because they had that power to make him obey, to make him cooperate and spit out the dead that he'd already taken because that was the children of Isis, our Divine Mother. So this cannot be possible because of two facts. Firstly, Osiris was murdered by Set. So Sebek could have possibly killed him. Secondly, Osiris brought Sebek up like his own son, so it doesn't make sense for Sebek to go against Osiris and Isis when he could eat anything else in the world. Well, I don't know what they're saying, but I don't think they understand the connection as to why Osiris and Isis was able to have control over the crocodile. Now, is that what we should think is supposed to be the meaning of John D having this crocodile always in their paintings? What were they trying to tell us by that painting? Look at the crocodile. Look at the... Well... It sounds to me like they were saying, look, this has to do with the spirits of the dead, the devil. We're getting information from the devil. Oh, yeah, it's true. Jesus has more power. But we're not supposed to be seeking the secrets of the dead crocodile and the powers of evil. We're supposed to be seeking the Lord who even controls death and Hades. If you want to know about death and Hades, you want to overcome it, you need to go to the Lord and not to the crocodile. Why would they have a crocodile in their paintings? Why would they celebrate morbidity and death? Why do the people who claim to be, oh, I don't know, 
modern Satanists. And they were like, oh, well, we're not really evil. You know, we, we just worship Satan because, you know, we don't really like uh, organized religion. Okay, but why? Are, if you don't like organized religion, why are you involved with organized religion? Well, we didn't like the way organized religion was going down because they're very evil. So we went to the God who is evil and started worshiping it. That doesn't make sense, you idiots. Listen, I had a guy... I won't even say that. I'm not, I'm not going to go there right now. But I'm trying to get... I, I have a question, guys. If you understand that, you know, maybe you're back in the day, you didn't know what to believe. And you get disillusioned with Christianity because they seem to be very bad all the time. And you're like, this can't be the true. I don't believe in this. Or right, I grant you that. I, I, I sympathize there. So you start searching. And like, well, I don't believe it. I'm going to reject God. I don't believe in God. I can't even understand that. Because it's like you saying, look, I don't know what to believe anymore. Okay, I believe in good. That's why I don't believe in God anymore. Because somebody told me God is bad. Somebody said that God's going to kill everybody and come in his wrath. So I don't believe in God anymore. That makes sense. Because why? Because I think that it makes sense that you want to be full of goodness and love. You don't believe in this evil and all this government and laws and death and control and hypocrisy. I get it. But what happens is your, your explanation of why you're doing what you're doing doesn't make sense. It doesn't match up with what you're saying. So instead of going and finding a God that's fluffy and loving, you're like, oh, we worship the great ego. Well, it's magnificent. It represents wisdom. Oh, we like dressing up like bunny rabbits because we're soft and pretty. You know, it's Easter. We like that part of Christianity. No, no, no. But you go and you get the devil part of Christianity with the horns and crocodiles and evil serpentine, you know, images and put tattoos on your body with serpents and and you embrace the darkness. Why? Because you're so interested in the darkness. Because why? Because Christianity thought, you know, it was going to be supreme with love. And it truly wasn't love. It was evil. So therefore I embraced evil and hated Christianity because it's evil, but embraced evil? You don't believe in Christianity? Well, it's all symbols, Dave. So it's not real. We're not, we're not really worshiping the devil. It's just all symbols. Okay. So why do you choose to symbolize what you worship as evil? You're not making any sense. You're, I'm calling your bluff. You're not, you're, what you're doing is you're trying to deceive mankind and you're pretending to be, well, we're not really bad. You're lying. You're bad. If you embrace the darkness. Now, if you're just a young person that got, you know, caught up and you thought it was cool and yeah, you, you started, you know, lighting candles and look, you can go that way. You can stray just for a second. In the split second, you can think, oh, I don't know, maybe I, and get confused. I'll, I will, I will imagine that maybe you could do that. But you cannot embrace that evil. Start dressing up like the devil and drinking blood and having seances and bringing up the dead. No, not any indication. You don't say the name of Jesus when you're doing it. You don't care about the angel. You want the devil to come out. You want the power and, and sex and you're having orgies and you know what you're doing. Don't. Give me that crap. You're worshiping Satan because you love evil and you sold your soul. And if you don't, if you don't intend to do what I've just said, if that offends you, then you need to stop right now acting like a devil and painting your face like a devil and running around talking about the devil and how you believe in the Satanism. But no, it's not really Satan. Screw that. If I catch another person claiming to be a Satanist or acting like they're really dark and, and creepy and doing seances and bringing up the dead and all this stuff openly and you know what you're doing and you're saying that's what you want to do, please don't think that we're, that we're similar. Oh, Dave, you and I are similar because you talk about all these things. No, I don't talk about that except to expose it. So we're not friends. I will not promote you. I'm not saying I don't love you as a brother. I, I will do whatever I can to help you if you need help. But you need to stop following Satan to have communion at my house. I'm sorry. But anyway, I think it's very clear that 
the world has been taken over and the reason is because mankind refused the truth that they might be saved. They rejected the love of the truth that might be saved and they are getting the strong delusion. It's the doctrines of demons and devils and they wanted these doctrines of devils. You people in this world, most of you, have chosen this life. You're not, you're more like a snake. You like the holes in the ground. You don't like the sunshine. You don't like coming out and, and laying on a rock and, and seeing beautiful flowers and sunsets and, and talking philosophy and love and, and caring for one another. And but No, you would prefer the darkness. I can actually hear people as I say that. I can just imagine somebody's listening and say, well, that's right, Dave. You know, now that you've gotten through this and you're like admitting the fact that yeah, that's what you like. Oh, that's it, Dave. That's it. We just like the deal. We're not ready to move on. And Okay, maybe it is your way, Dave. Maybe you're right. But that's fine. I'm not interested in the kingdom of Christ and love. You know, I'm not ready for that. I'm going to stay over here in this darkness and enjoy myself and have a few orgies. Thank you. And maybe one day I'll see you in heaven. But not now. Well, friends, be very careful. Because... There is a point of no return. And if you've actually come to the point where you realize that's what you're doing, you're just sowing some oats, man, you better be very careful. Because at the moment, you can see that, but pretty soon, your perception's going to get even weaker. And there is no guarantee that we can revive you at any time soon. There is no guarantee. I mean, you know, you'll be looking on and seeing us over there at the table of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at his bosom, in the bosom position, eating at the great table. And you'll be down there wreathing in the, in, in the choices that you've made with no way to have any satisfaction because you've, you've become addicted to your pleasures and your dark way of thinking to the point where unhappiness and sadness and hate has become your entire being. And it may take you millions of years to come out of it. I don't know. I am not capable of saying whether or not you can at this point safely come home. Everybody's welcome in heaven, but you got to want to come. You got to be willing. And if you somehow suppress your natural desire to have love and kindness and 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 somehow ruin your thought processing and 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 you, you come to a place where you just hate yourself so badly that you can't even forgive yourself then it may take you an awful long time to get to this place of love again this is your opportunity to repent of all of these dark all these dark things that you've been doing and understand that you've been playing with fire and it's wrong and now say look I was deceived I get what you're saying Dave thank you for helping me see this because look I do love everyone that I it, hopefully that it that can hear this I mean I love I don't know you I I I I generally care for people I I don't have any thoughts of wishing anyone ill. I want all of you to attain unto this resurrection unto life. Why wouldn't I? It, it breaks my heart to think of what people are going to be going through because of their choices that they've made. It breaks my heart. And some of you are willingly ignorant. You know? You, you know that what you're, you're painting all over your body and all these rituals and practices and this thing that you're dabbling in is not from the Lord. I'm telling you it's out of love. You need to stop now and seek the Lord. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and go well over an hour. I'm going to go ahead and get this loaded. Hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one.